We're back with the breakfast and plus tv africa you know time for us to look at uh our second conversation, usually on Fridays, we get to talk sports. There's a lineup for us this morning. First, we'll look at Super Falcons' squad in the Revelation uh, Cup. Monday Thomas will be joining the conversation uh, this morning. Monday, it's good to have you join us. Thank you so much for having me, Mercy. It's another Friday. I'm excited to talk sports with you. All right, then. Uh, so we already know that the Super Falcons of Nigeria will compete in Revolution Cup in Mexico or Revolution Cup Mexico, uh, a four-nation competition. It's the first of its kind, you know, for FIFA. And I'd like you to speak to the fact that uh, the Falcons will compete in the event against the hosts. Uh, we're looking at Mexico, Costa Rica, and Colombia. What are your thoughts? These teams are not, uh, you know, a walk in the park. Uh, it's not actually uh, really, really new to the Super Falcons. They are, uh, they are always involved in uh, invitational tournaments uh, before a uh, very major tournament. It is just 174 days to go to the FIFA World Cup, which is going to kick start on the 20th of uh, July this year. And there is need for the Super Falcons to get prepared uh, for the big one. Their Revolution Cup that is going to be taking place in Leon, Mexico, it's certainly a great one. It's uh, basically uh, to try out players who will be representing the Super Falcons. I mean, it's been some time since the Super Falcons represented in the best way that we know them to. Nine-time African champions. They went to the last uh, WAFCON, uh, which was uh, staged in Morocco, and they finished fourth place, beaten in the third place by Zambia. They lost in the semifinals to the host nation, Morocco. In, in, going into that tournament, there were the uh, super dogs, they were the, the favorites, but what happened to them was not very uh, acceptable by Nigerians. And uh, heading to this Revelation Cup, I'm pretty sure the coach, Wandy Waldrop, knows what is involved, leading the nine times African champions to yet again another World Cup. But before the World Cup, there's a Revelation Cup, and the expectation is really high. We take on Mexico in the first game. In the other game, we take in the second game, we take on Colombia, and in the third game, we take on Costa Rica. Without a doubt, I don't think there is any minor in uh, world football this day. So, Mexico, Colombia, and uh, Costa Rica is uh, are very important uh, uh, games that we should take on, and I think we should just, I mean, get the possible the best result and uh, ensure that we make mistakes right there that can be corrected before the World Cup. But I, I'm thinking Coach Wani Waldrum should get at least two wins in that invitational tournament. So what should the focus be on? I mean, because you know Nigerians like to win. Um, I mean, football fans generally around the world like to win. We like to see our teams win. We don't know about friendly or no friendly match. What should the focus be on this tournament as far as the Super Falcons are concerned? Try out all um, the players you want to try out give them a run out on the field and try and formulate and agree on your strategy, your formation, you know, and all that, or go out there and seek to win this cup? Of course, uh, going to win, it should be the mentality of any any country that wants to go forth as far as football is concerned. You know, a uh, coffee football is a game of momentum. But I've, I've seen a couple of times where uh, clubs, uh, especially in club football, where we get to see uh, clubs having a bad preseason, but when they get into the main action, they do well. But I've also seen clubs having a poor preseason, and in the real season, they were struggling. The likes of Chelsea, they had a terrible preseason, and we are seeing them in this uh, current Premier League season. They are struggling. But as I said, football is a game of momentum, and uh, it's been a long time since the Super Falcons were able to uh, thrill us with uh, what they know how to do best. And uh, I'm hoping Coach Wandy Waldrum, who is under immense pressure, there are still chances that he, he, he might not be the one to take Nigeria to the World Cup. So he's going to play as if his life depends on it. Of course, his job depends on that invita uh, invitational tournament in Mexico. So, wow. Well, but, but I mean, I mean, if it's an invitational tournament preparatory to the World Cup, you know, in some of these... Um, uh, uh, pre-tournament uh, competitions you have um, the, 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 the entire squad and the coach might decide to to play one team in the first half and another team in the second half to give everyone a chance to justify uh, their position okay in the World Cup um, it, 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 if, it, if Nigeria if, if the Falcons are going out to to win the cup then they should play their first 11 or their best players in every match it means that others will not have a chance to play so the coach can see what they can do 
23 players, 23 Sorry players have Sorry been invited. All right, 23 players have been invited. I, I tell you that these players are a bigger part of that is, I really apologize for that. So yeah. 23 players have been invited, and I tell you for certain that these 23 players are big girls. Yeah, they're playing top legs. Ashisha Roshola is right there. Uh, Rajira Rashibade, Francisco Odega. These are quality players. I actually took a look at the squad. I'm like, I mean, these are first first team players in uh, both club and country. So going to that particular one, they don't even have new legs. Maybe it's uh, for the uh, uh, former under-20 captain, Oluwa Tosin Ademi, who's um, still a very new girl right there, although she has played a couple of games for the Super Falcons. So it's a three-game three, uh, three game tournament, and uh, they have enough time to try out all the players they want to. They also have experienced players as uh, Onome B and as well as um, this lady, uh, Osinachi Ohale. So it's a full squad. I mean... It's not a squad where they're saying they want to try new legs. Oh. I mean, it's a full squad where everyone has uh, played top quality football, both for the Super Falcons and their respective clubs. So I, I expect them to go out there for a win, especially for the love of uh, football here in Nigeria. And Coach Wandy Waldrum was not But really, Thomas, uh, uh, Thomas, you, you already know how, how, how he pans out. I mean, not just in you know, the women's football, but you, you also see that, uh, you know, with the men's football where you have these superstars, when they get to their clubs where they play, I mean, they, they do very well, fantastic performance, and it's always easy for us to be proud and identify with them, even when, you know, that it's entirely not the, the league, the nation's league. But um, we have also seen cases where they come back to play, you know, fourth year, uh, you know, the league now, so you're playing for the country, and then it's usually a different result. The, the same player you see, the same assistant or swaller that you see play for Barcelona, uh, you know, going ahead and scoring goals, when she comes, you know, to the, the Super Falcons, it's a different, you know, game entirely. So, I mean, should we still be excited that and, and be expecting that, yes, uh, there's anything, there's going to be a difference? Of course, we should be excited because she showed us Shola. She's in form. She scored a hat trick about uh, uh, three days ago. I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking to form now. I'm saying I'm speaking to. I just use that as an example. I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm saying. Going to answer your question. I'm going to answer your question. We've got a fantastic team. We've got brilliant ladies who are ready to play uh, for the Super Falcons. They are ready to play for Nigeria. But one thing I'm not really sure about that team is the coach. Wani Waldrama, he, he's a long overdue in that position. He has overstayed his welcome if the NFL will critically look at this. I mean, he's not really done much for Nigerian football. I mean, going into the WAFCON, we were the defending champion, and we expected to finish at least second in that tournament, making it to the final. But losing out in the semifinals to eventual winners, Morocco, was not a good result for me. And even crashing out in the third place as fourth place winners, I mean, it was not it. So I think the coach, we need to take a look at the coach because when you have great players who are doing greatly for their clubs, they're getting contracts, contract extension, they're playing for top flight European teams. And when they well, come home, they don't well. get to deliver as they should. So I think my problem is right now the coach, Wandy Waldrum, I won't come out to say things that would indict him. But we've seen we've seen his form. We've seen his uh, his antecedent is not good enough to to see Nigeria progress as far as uh, the World Cup is concerned. It's just 90, 174 days ago. I think it is still enough time for us to change the manager because I'm pretty sure. Uh, I mean, usually when we talk about this, a, lo a lot of persons would you know raise the issue of being patriotic and uh, patriotism. And, you know, when you get to the clubs, it's a favorable, you know, uh, system, however. But, you know, I'm not hoping that you answer to that. Uh, let's quickly move away for the want of time. Uh, the NPFL, uh, match day four, looking at it, if you look at the fixtures tomorrow, uh, 28th of January, Bendel Insurance and Remo Stars, Dakada FC and uh, Rivers United. And there's also you know, Enyimba and Quarry United. I'd like you to speak to that. Uh, starting off with, the, you know, the Remo Stars, they've been quite impressive. What are your thoughts? Fantastic team. They don't just have a great football. Um, they don't just play great football, right? They, I love their media team. I love their branding. That's uh, what every NPFL club should follow. I mean, they've set the pace when it comes to branding and making the football all very attractive because... Uh, football is no longer a leisure. Football is uh, getting to be a venture. I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, impressed by what Remo Stars are doing off and on the pitch. 
But tomorrow, taking on Bendel Insurance uh, in uh, the at the Samuel Bermuda Stadium in Benin is is going to be a cracker. You know why? Because in Group A, we have for Remo Stars who are topping and uh, Bendel Insurance who are second. There are only two inside after match day, day three that have maintained a hundred percent winning record, and that is Remo Stars and Bendel Insurance. So we can say uh, we are going to see a top of the table clash, and uh, it's certainly going to be an exciting one. We'll be taking on Plateau United at the Gossel of Power International Stadium. That should be on Sundays. Also going to be a cracking game. But for me, Bethel Insurance taking on Remo Stars, that's the game of the week. So what happens? Uh, what do you make of Dakada and uh, Rivers United? All right, Dakada lost their first game uh, last time out. And that was in match day three against Doha United, losing by one goal to nil. They've been impressive. They got uh, a draw against Bielsa uh, United in their first game and won their second game at the Gossel Republic International Stadium. So they'll be looking to win because you know why? This is an approach version of the league. You need to take every game, you need to play every game as if it is a final because I, instead of uh, playing 38 games, you're going to play about 18 games. Uh, three have been played already, 15 more to come. And before you know it, the Super 6 will be here. Then teams are going to play to make it to the Super 6. And two teams will be from respective groups. So we are in one of the best NPFL seasons of all times. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. But I think it's, it's a cracker. Uh, Dakota FC uh, will be looking to get a win against uh, champions the current champions, the reigning champions, Rivers United. And it's not going to be so easy, but I see them getting a one year win. All right, let's, uh, because of time, quickly go over to the big one tonight. Um, I'm sure that you've canceled all your appointments, uh, canceled everything. Um, you won't be picking calls. You just want to, by 9 p.m., sit down and watch uh, the duel between the first team in the Premier League and the second team in the English Premier League. Um, I'm happy to talk about the Nigerian League because uh, that's important. But uh, the Master versus the Apprentice is built as a match between the Master and Apprentice. Mikel Ateta versus, um, of course, uh, uh, Pep Guardiola, who is his master, worked with him for some time. Who is coming out with a win in this FA Cup fixture? I know, I know yes, definitely the Master versus the Apprentice. But I, I always see this fixture... Uh, pretty boys versus the petty boys. Of course, you know uh, that uh, Manchester uh, City are the petty boys. They, when they want to come at you, they come at you full blast. They are savage of uh, English football. And of course, they have the likes of Erdogan, Brad Haaland. But let's look at it this way. I think it's very obvious for everyone to see that uh, uh, Mikel Arteta, who was under the tutelage of Pep Guardiola some years ago, he has maybe masterminded. He has maybe uh, found some antidote in uh, Pep Guardiola's football. I mean, he has uh, maybe found those loopholes, those uh, mistakes that Pep Guardiola gets to make some, some games. And that's why we, in the last time uh, Arsenal won the FA Cup, uh, en routing to the final, Arsenal beat Pep Guardiola. And I think that season, that COVID-19 season, it was in the three season, Arsenal beat Pep Guardiola in uh, the FA Cup and also beat Pep Guardiola in the Premier League. So, Mikel Arteta somehow knows how to beat Pep Guardiola. I mean... Uh, and Mikel Arteta can play the Pep Guardiola's game because he's been he's been his boss in uh, the days when he was the assistant manager way back in Manchester City. So let's just see if uh, Pep Guardiola uh, maybe uh, changes tactics uh, from the ones he used to use when Pep Guardiola when Mikel Arteta was under him. So today is uh, a day where we can't easily because Pep Guardiola and Manchester City they know that. If they are dwindling in form and they will want to get back uh, to that form that we know them of. I mean, uh, losing to Manchester City, uh, losing to Manchester United uh, has gone to show that they can be beaten by any team. And uh, Pep Guardiola playing at the ATF Stadium, uh, City are the ones with the advantage. And uh, the traveling side, uh, Arsenal, are a struggling side, when, especially when they play against right. Manchester City at All the right. ATF Stadium. All right. All right. Interesting. Yeah, uh, I can tell you that Arsenal will win that game. Uh, very comfortably, <laughs> yes, because it's, it's, it's the FA Cup. Why did you choke? It's the Cup. <laughs> oh, uh, but I, I hope you've not placed a bet on it, though. <laughs> I mean, I'm an Arsenal fan. I will never advise you to place a bet on my team. I know you're an Arsenal fan too, Monday. Really? Um, really? Coffee? Yes. Coffee, this... 
this season Arsenal is a team you can trust. But I, I, I know, I know. I, I'm just that's just my philosophy, really. Um, mm. you know, experience, experience. <laughs> I'm confident about my team this this season. Uh, season, but it's too early for me to change that philosophy. All right, I won't advise you to go and put your money. In. Maybe you you have to bring me confidence. You look like you're so confident. Yeah, well, you can place your no, money. No, I said, <laughs> I said it's not a game that we can easily predict. We just have to wait mm. and see, watch it, and enjoy it. Uh, right. uh, yeah. um, um, well, we have, we have to we go, have to go now. Monday, Monday thank you very much. I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, yeah. now that uh, all the Arsenal fans seem to just be taking the back seat, that's what it is right here. Uh, definitely. Yeah, we're, 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 just, we're just chilling. We're not, we're not struggling with anybody. We have anybody. to go now. We have you to know, go. I know you're super anybody. excited about that one. And yeah. uh, let's yeah. see how that pans out. We will definitely return on Monday with more interesting lineup for you. And of course, we'll join the newsroom at nine o'clock for the news brief. My name is Messi Ebopo. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's fine to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning.